So leader election is important in every single distributed system out there as it enables us to auto recover from failures. In this video, we take a detailed look at a synchronous ring based algorithm called the HS algorithm and see how it works on a bidirectional network in order n log n complexity. But before we move forward, I'd like to talk to you about a course on system design that I've been running for over a year now. The course is a cohort based course, which means I won't be rambling a solution and it will not be a monologue. Instead, a small focused group of 50-60 engineers every cohort will be brainstorming systems and designing it together. This way, we build a solid system and learn from each other's experiences. The course to date is enrolled by 600 plus engineers spanning 9 cohorts and 10 countries. Engineers from companies like Google, Microsoft, GitHub, Slack, Facebook, Tesla, Yelp, Flipkart, Dream11 and many 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 more have taken this course and have some wonderful things to say. The coolest part about the course is the depth we go into and the breadth we cover. We cover topics ranging from real-time text communication for Slack to designing our own toy load balancer to Greek buzzes live text commentary to doing impressions counting at scale for any advertisement business. In all, we would cover roughly 28 questions and the detailed curriculum uh, split week by week can be found on the course page which is linked in the description down below. So if you are looking to learn system design, from the first principles, you will love this course. I have two offerings for you. The first one is the live cohort based course which you see on the left side and the second one is the recorded course which you can see on the right side. The live cohort based course happens every two months and it will go on for eight weeks while the recorded course contains the recordings from one of the past cohorts as is. If you are in a hurry and want to binge learn system design, I would highly recommend you going for the recorded one. Otherwise, the live cohort is where you can participate and discuss things live with me and the entire cohort and amplify your learnings. The decision is totally up to you. The course details, prerequisites, testimonials can be found on the course page arpitbhairi.me slash masterclass and I would highly recommend you to check that out. I put the link of uh, the course in the description down below. So if you are interested to learn system design, go for it. Check out the link in the description down below and I hope to see you in my next cohort. So in a distributed system where you have a leader and a lot of followers, there is a possibility that your leader node can go down. And if your leader node goes down, either you can do a manual intervention and configure another node to be the new leader, but it takes time, A plus manual intervention. So it's always better that your system auto recovers. The way it does it, it, it basically runs a leader election algorithm, which automatically elects a new leader in a few seconds. And this is why leader elections are important in a distributed system. So, the algorithm that we'll be talking about is called as the HS algorithm, which is also a synchronous algorithm, which means that every node participating in this election would know, ki, hey, now the election is starting, now we are moving to the next round, then the next round, then the next round, and now the election is ended. So, they are all operating synchronously when the election process starts. Apart from that, they could operate on its own, but when the leader election algorithm starts, they are operating in a synchronous way. The best part of this algorithm is that it's communication complexity, which means that during the leader election, the number of messages exchanged is just order of n log n. The LCR algorithm, which we saw in the previous video, it had a communication complexity of order n square. And this is just order n log n, which means that the total number of messages exchanged during the leader election is just order n log n, which is very efficient as compared to your previous LCR algorithm, which was n square. Now, this means that there would be very less network congestion happening in the network, right? So, this is a good part of this, uh, of this algorithm. Now, this, although this algorithm works on a lot of topologies, but the bare minimum expectation that it has is that every node knows both of its neighbors, like its left neighbor and the right neighbor, or its clockwise neighbor and anti-clockwise neighbor. So, it expects a bi-directional ring structure. In between, node can be connected to any other node, but at least the bare minimum connection that it expects is of a bi-directional ring, where every node knows the node on its, uh, no, the immediate node in its clockwise direction and in its anti-clockwise direction. This is the bare minimum expectations that it has. Right? The algorithm works even when the total number of nodes in the network are unknown, and which is the great part. So, not the each node need not know the total number of nodes in the system. It would work without that as well. Right? Fair bit of assumptions that we are making is every node has a unique UID which are comparable 
and every node knows both of its immediate neighbors so that it can form a bidirectional ring. So these are the bare minimum assumptions that we start with. And now we take a look at this very interesting algorithm and what it does, right? <clears throat> so here, when a node detects that, hey, leader is down, it triggers a leader election and because it is synchronous, every node would know ki, hey, now we are starting up a leader election uh, in our network. So every node participates in this election and it pitches itself to be the new leader because everyone wants to be the leader and everyone pitches to be the new leader. Ki, hey, I want to be the new leader. Right? Now, how, how would it pitch? Every node creates a message with its own UID. It basically creates its own candidature and sends it to its immediate neighbors. Here, there are two neighbors, right? One in the clockwise direction, another one in the anti-clockwise direction. So it creates a message and sends it to both of its neighbors. Now, in order, so here what would happen? In order to reduce, because the communication complexity is order n log n, which means we have to do better than n square. So the idea here is not every node, like there would be multiple rounds in this algorithm, but the nodes who know that their UID is definitely less than someone in the network, they would be immediately stepping out of election that, hey, we are not participating in the election anymore. And this way, the number of messages would be reduced. So the core idea is <coughs> that the nodes, as soon as they identify that they are definitely less than some, some of the node, step out. This would reduce the number of messages that are exchanged during this leader election and hence reducing the communication complexity. So here we add a concept of a local maxima and a global maxima, right? So node needs to know that if it is at least in the local maxima, if it is in the local maxima, then it has a chance of surviving when we are doing a global maxima. And here what we would do is we would start with a like core idea I'm just talking about that every node will find out, hey, in the neighborhood of one, am I the local maxima? In neighborhood of two, am I the local maxima? In neighborhood of four, if I am the local maxima, if in neighborhood of eight, am I the local maxima? If it is, then it is continuously surviving to be a global maxima. This is the core idea. Right? So now here, what would happen is each of the participating node that you have in each phase I. So the election happens in multiple phases. Right? So each of the party, uh, each of the participating node in each phase I sends message up to two raised to i nodes, right? So in my zeroth phase, phase zero, every node participates in the election that we know of and every node sends message in two raised to zero equal to one. So in its one neighborhood. So mes every node would send message to a distance of one node in clockwise direction and in anti-clockwise direction or left or right. Right. So here they would be making one neighborhood and find out and finding out ki, hey, am I the local maxima in this one neighborhood? In phase zero, it would know ki, am I the like do I have the largest UID in this range or in this neighborhood, local neighborhood of one one neighborhood from my current node. Right. So let's say if my node seven has three on the left and nine on the right. Now, what would happen in phase zero? Seven would pitch itself and would create a message with seven in it and send it to three and nine. Now, what would happen is they would decide ki, is seven the bigger one. So similar to LCR algorithm, we do something very similar over here as well. That when the neighboring node receives the message, then what they do is they compare the incoming UID with their own UID. Right. So now let's say we have order 3, 7 and 9. So 3 would receive a message from 7. Now what would happen? Here as soon as 3 node receives a message from 7, what would happen is it would compare the incoming UID which is 7 with 3. The 3 node would compare 7 with itself, 3, it would find that incoming UID is greater than its own UID. Correct? Because 7 is greater than 3. So what it would do is it would forward it to its neighbor until the hop sustains. I'll explain that in a minute. But it it basically classifies to be, hey, hey, now I can forward this message. Otherwise, it would not. Right? So it would keep, it, it would basically forward the message. Right? Now, what could happen is the incoming UID is less than its own UID. 
right so let's say my incoming uid was 7 now let's say i'm i'm talking about node 9 receiving message from node 7 what would happen is 7 would be sent to 9 9 would say that hey incoming uid 7 is less than my own uid so i will discard the message so message is not sent like the message is discarded by that node right and now if your incoming uid is same as your uid you would identify yourself as the local leader i'll i'll, I'll give an example so let's let's take a detailed example and explain when this would happen. So here, when the message is sent, like when a node participates in this phase of election, it sends message to its neighborhood. Right? When it sends message to its neighborhood, it sends in some local neighborhood, let's say 1, 2, 4, 8, something. When it is sending the message in that neighborhood, once the number of hops exhaust then the message is sent back to the originating node so for example in phase 0 a node sends message to its immediate node to its immediate neighbors right and then they would send back the message to the originating node because one hop is complete right then in the second in in second phase what would happen is uh, sorry in phase one so first was phase zero then in phase one what would happen two raised to one hops right so then it would do two raised to one hops which means it would start from this node and send to its immediate neighbors and they would send to their neighbors so now this node is evaluating that hey am i still a local maxima in neighborhood of two if it is then well enough so once the message hits the nodes at distance of two hops from my current node, they would be sending back to the originating node. This way, slowly and steadily, we are increasing our neighborhood to see if we are still the maximum or not, if we are well and good. So now what would happen is if we are forwarding a message in let's say hop 2, 2 hops, right? And if we receive the message back from them, because what would what could happen? If your incoming, if for the other nodes, if the incoming UID is less than its own UID, they are discarding the message, which means that if the message is discarded, they would not get reply from a particular side, right? And that is where what would happen is if a message, if a node receives the reply, like it went in that direction and it receives the reply from both the sides, it means that it is still the local maxima in that neighborhood. Now here, Subsequent phases that you have is you would start with phase 0, phase 1, phase 2, phase 3, phase 4. So you are constantly testing yourself that hey, am I the local maxima in 2 raised to 0 equal to 1 neighborhood, 2 raised to 1, 2 neighborhood or 4 neighborhood or 8 neighborhood. Eventually what would happen is your ring would exhaust and you would get and you would get your probe message directly. Right? And if that happens, you would know that hey, you are the leader. Right. So here, a very simple way to see this is how we are constantly increasing our neighborhood with each phase and seeing that am I still a local maxima. And now eventually what would happen? The message with the large, the node with the largest UID would survive because all other messages would be discarded. Right. So this is what the core idea of this algorithm is all about. So here you can very clearly see how and here one key thing to note, it's not that because it's a bi-directional ring, every node only is supposed to know its immediate neighbors, right? So even though a node is stepping out of election that, hey, I have a smaller UID, I'm definitely not going to be a global maximum, so I need to step out, but they would still be relaying the messages because the node is not expected to know any other node in the system, it's expected to know only its immediate neighbors on the left and on the right, right? So other nodes are still relaying the messages. But they are still doing it in a way that, hey, we would know that, hey, I'm, I'm basically forwarding this message till this hop. So they would continue to relay the message while doing that comparison of dropping the message or not. And all of that is continuously happening, right? But they're still relaying the messages and they're not like, hey, I won't do anything in the election because I'm not going to be the leader, right? So this is a very nice order n log n idea now you can very clearly see how we are reducing the number of messages by moving in one neighborhood then two four eight and so on and so forth and which is what reduces the communication complexity of this algorithm right so here 
the node with the highest uid will be will be surviving this entire drill and what would happen is that would be the only one that would be left in the system and when that happens when a node receives its probe message right so the node like, let's say if in my ring i have six nodes what would happen as soon as i hit my four neighborhood like two is to two as soon as i go to my second phase what would happen is i would receive my own sorry with eight i would receive my own probe message right because i'm moving it to eight hops i only have six node in the system so what would happen is i will go around the ring and come back to the same node again so that's how you would know that hey no one else is surviving everyone else stepped out no one else is the local maxima anymore so because there are no local maxima and i am the only one local maxima which means i am the global maxima right and this is how the message from a node with the highest uid survives the ring and when a node receives its own probe message it would know that hey it has the highest uid and it can and it is the new leader anymore so now the new leader relays the message in both the direction and every node knows about it that hey this is this node is the new leader and this is how the new leader is elected in this system uh, by this algorithm right. one key implementation detail that i want to talk about is how would you know that the number of hops are existed uh, are exhausted the core of this algorithm is that we are first checking in one neighborhood then two neighborhood then four hop neighborhood right so you need to know that hey now i have now my message has made four hops and now i have to come back again so how do you do this so the message that a node sends in a particular phase it has three details uid which is the node that has i am participating in this election so my uid would be there plus the number of hops it needs to make so 1 2 4 8 16 the hop count and the direction is it left or right is it clockwise or anti clockwise now what this would help is every time this message is forwarded to the new node or or basically to the neighborhood node it would reduce the hops and send it forward it would reduce the hop and send it forward and on and so on and so forth once it reaches the node and the hops are exhausted it uses its direction and reverses it and sends it in the other direction right and that's how this is the key implementation detail on how this is actually implemented so the number of hops is pa is stored in the message and is sent across and is reduced at every hop once it becomes zero it relays it back to the originating node in the opposite direction and that's why we are sending the hops and the direction be it clockwise or anti clockwise in the message itself so this would help the node to know when to stop forwarding and when and in which direction to reply right and this is a very simple yet very efficient implementation of a leader relational algorithm this is how it reduces the communication complexity because each node is now only acting as a relay rather than pitching itself the complexity has drastically reduced to order n log n because we are constantly increasing our neighborhood and a lot of nodes would constantly be falling out of the system and say uh, would be falling out of the election right and this was the hs algorithm to do leader election in a distributed system with bidirectional uh, in a bidirectional ring and that's the beauty of this implementation so yeah that's it for this video if you guys like this video give this video a thumbs up if you guys like the channel give this channel a sub i post three in depth engineering videos every week and i'll see you in the next one thanks a ton